up everyone and welcome back to Combat Mission Black Sea for the fourth mission of the US campaign, which the briefing nicely informs me will be the last mission of the US campaign if I screw this up. The Russians are advancing up Highway E95 in serious strength and they're going to reach Kiev if we don't stop them here at this industrial complex overlooking the highway. Now I've got two major problems here. Problem number one is that I'm going to be fighting with a very light force to begin with. Two US light infantry platoons with two javelins and four missiles between them a Ukrainian infantry platoon, three BMPs, and a T-64. Sure, I've got a chunky urban industrial area to hide in and fight from, but the briefing reliably informs me that Ivan is bringing the whole combined armed circus of T-90s, BMP-3s, infantry, artillery, and air power in enough strength to totally outclass what I've got. These are probably elements of that Russian motor rifle brigade, which we poked in the last mission, so the upside is that it should be fairly under strength. The downside is that there's still a metric shit ton of them. I am getting Bravo Company team in half an hour, which has got one Abrams platoon and two Bradley platoons, but whether any of my original force will survive long enough to be bailed out is hard to say. Problem number two, and arguably the bigger problem, is that Ivan has finally thrown his electronic warfare hand in and everything jammable has been jammed. So I have no artillery, I have no air support, I have no radio between squads, teams and vehicles. We're back to hand signals and harsh language. And this is pretty game changing territory for the Americans in Black Sea. That massive command and control advantage that they have is gone. And while the troops are just as well trained, I'm going to need to clump them together if I want them to be able to share information and cooperate and communicate effectively. Which is bad because Ivan is bringing a lot of firepower to this fight. And to minimise the effect of that, I want to disperse and spread my troops out. So I have another wonderful Catch-22 to play with here. Luckily, I've got this complex to exploit. If I was in the open, I'd have no chance whatsoever. And I'm going to be avoiding the front of the complex like the plague because I don't want to be exposed to all Ivan's direct fire. The broad outline of my plan here is to fall back by ambushes. Keep giving Ivan short, sharp shocks without hanging around long enough for him to gain fire superiority or pin me down. The big thing is going to be to separate the Russian infantry from its vehicles, so the entrances to the complex are stuffed full of anti-tank mines and covered with shoot and scoot AT teams. There are plenty of one-shot disposable AT weapons in the BMPs, and everyone is loaded up with them. The BMPs themselves and the practically ancient T-64 are going to be playing the same hit and run game, but I'm really not expecting very much of any of them. The only forces who aren't going to be falling back are a couple of sniper teams who are going to be very quietly staying behind in some good OP positions so I can keep eyes on all the open ground outside the complex and I can see what Ivan is up to. They're not going to be able to share that information with anybody else on the map because of the Russian jamming, but I'm going to be able to use it in my godlike capacity as the player. The plan for Bravo Company when they eventually turn up is obviously going to be heavily based on how the battle is panning out and where Ivan's forces are. The two Bradley platoons are almost certainly going to be counterattacking into the industrial complex to clear Ivan out. Whether the Abrams go with them or go out to the left to get out into the open to dominate these huge fields is going to depend on where the Russian armour is and how far they've pushed and how much of it is still out there. In terms of the actual mission objectives, there are 5,000 points available, 2,500 of which are for destroying the enemy, and another 1,000 are for holding the highway and the overpass. So if push comes to shove, the plan is to maximise enemy casualties and retake the highway. That way I could, in theory, bypass Russian forces bogged down in the complex, but it's early days yet, and we'll see how it pans out. As usual, the big, big thing for me here is to be patient. I've got two hours for this. I don't need to rush Bravo Company in like the cavalry to save the day. I can go slow and steady. I can let Ivan come to me if that's what he's going to do. And I can concentrate on killing without worrying too much about taking or holding ground until later on. The Russians are kicking things off by throwing as much artillery as they can at the industrial complex. This is pretty standard stuff and the obvious counter to it would have been to deploy my troops further back so the initial barrage falls on empty positions that my pixel trooper can then reoccupy after the shells have stopped but before Ivan is over them. The issue with that though is that a semi-competent adversary is going to do his best to follow the barrage as closely as possible to stop me doing that and I feel like abandoning those choke points at the front of the complex and deploying in depth from the start isn't going to help me slow Ivan down though. 
The result is casualties and suppression, but only light casualties because the buildings are providing good enough cover from pretty much everything except direct hits. And even though I can see by my OPs that Ivan is advancing some BMP-3 motor rifle platoons with attached 290s across the open ground in front of the complex, he hasn't reached the complex before the artillery starts to slacken off. In fact, he pauses his platoons right outside the walls in order to dismount his infantry, and that gives my pixel trooper enough time to get over the suppression and get back into their ambush. Outside the complex, the Russians are encountering no resistance whatsoever, I've got nothing out there, and they're already pushing on to the E95 highway objective, but inside the complex, things start to get very messy, very quickly. Ivan hits the right-hand gate first, where the lead BMP runs into a crater and gets nailed by one of the BMPs, kicking off the ambush. Soon there are AT4s and HEDP 40mm grenades flying everywhere, and the Russian infantry are getting cut down. But the surviving BMPs and their attached P90s quickly start returning fire, so it's time to disengage and fall back. On the far right, the lone BMP2 was taken out by an RPG, but once my pixel trippers from the gate have fallen back and set up to cover that corner, Ivan's infantry can't push it without taking heavy casualties. All in all, this isn't as bad as it could have been, but all that explosive reactive armour on the Russian vehicles really takes the sting out of infantry handheld anti tank weapons, and despite hammering the little green men, Ivan's armour remains a serious threat. The US sniper team in its OP on the right flank gets bumped by Russians coming up the stairs and then finished off by cannon fire from the BMPs, leaving a very worried Ukrainian sniper team as my last OP over on the right. Ivan has put some troops through their building but there was never any contact and those guys are able to carry on observing very, very quietly. Events at the left-hand gate kick off at about the same time and follow a similar course. Ivan takes plenty of casualties, but ultimately he's able to gain that fire superiority and I have to start falling back. The Ukrainian infantry have some difficulties disengaging and are almost wiped out. This is partly my fault as I brought the gate buildings down with 30mm cannon fire and opened some sight lines up for the Russian armour, but Ivan's artillery has already breached the centre of the perimeter wall and he's attacking through there as well, so I'm under pressure across the board to fall back so that my forces aren't simply bypassed. Ivan is pushing inside the complex. He runs into some more ambushes when he tries to exploit left and right, but all of my armour is gone. The T-64 went down without firing a shot, and while I might be stalling him on the flanks, he's through my line in the centre and he's exploiting away. It's now 30 minutes into the mission and I've just been reinforced by Brawa Company, so I need to decide what I'm going to do with them. Overall, I could be in a better place in the industrial complex. Ivan has hurt me more than I've hurt him, and I'm finding it difficult to disengage fast enough. I'm almost out of anti-tank weapons. To make matters worse, there are forces in between my two US infantry platoons in the centre of the complex, and maybe some tanks or BMPs that have pushed through the gap and are somewhere behind me. Outside the industrial complex, Ivan has pretty much occupied this tree line anchored by the highway objective at one end and this compound at the other. As a guesstimate, he's got a BMP-3 motor rifle platoon backed up by a tank in each area, or basically a reinforced mechanized company occupying that tree line. It also looks like he's got at least one platoon at the overpass, then some more forces in the far tree line. Of course, the situation isn't static. Ivan could get reinforcements of his own, he could leave his positions and advance some more, or he could dig in. He might be getting cast, he might be getting more artillery, I've only seen motor rifle infantry and tanks so far, he might have some nasty ATDMs like the AT-14 out there somewhere, and those will make a mess even of something like an Abram, so I have to be quite careful with them. At the end of the day though, I've got a choice between focusing left or right, between attacking a Russian defensive screen across open terrain, or counter-attacking a Russian push through the industrial complex. Neither option feels like a good option, but I still have an hour and a half to play with here, so what I'm going to do is send one Bradley team far left to get eyes on Ivan's tree line and start picking away at his armour with javelins, and the other Bradley platoon right to back up the defence of the complex and form an armour stop line at the next two objectives to plug up Ivan's advance in the centre or at least wear him down. The Abrams platoon is pretty much going to stay where it is. That's going to be my reserve to send left or right if the situation demands it, or to wait until the infantry have thinned out the tree line a bit and I can advance out there. The last part of the new force, some Stinger AA teams, are going to split up among the platoons for a bit of local air defence. So the updated plan in a nutshell is to take it slow and steady, wearing Ivan down until I can push forward myself. 
If he pushes me, then fantastic. It will be much easier to kill. I've got my Abraham standing by. If he doesn't, then I'm just going to wear him down so that we're able to roll over him later on in the mission. My major concern as we kick off again is Ivan's push up my centre. I've got a Bradley platoon rushing forward to plug that gap up, but if they get into a meeting engagement with Russian tanks, they're going to lose. I need to get into a position first, deploy my infantry and engage that enemy armour on my own terms. That means that Ivan and I are pretty much racing to get to the metallurgy plant and whoever gets there first is going to control that centre engagement. On the plus side, I don't need to worry too much about the little green men. While the Russian armour is able to speed past in the centre without too many problems, the infantry is getting lit up by enfilade fire from my right hand strong point and they're taking heavy casualties as they try to cross and keep up with the armour. There's a similar story on the left of the complex where the Russian infantry that was shattered storming the gates gets very roughly handled when it tries to push on. Some squirters get through centre left and get into the EXO's OP building, but they're the exception and the real threat is from Ivan's rewarding armour. Luckily, of the two T90s on the left, one looks like it's been immobilised after hitting a mine at the gate, and the other one has been hammered by so many AT4s and HTP grenades that it seems a lot of the optics and exterior systems have been stripped off and it's acting like it's pretty much blind. At the plant's objective, the Bradleys take up positions behind the building while the infantry dismount to occupy the place and get eyes on the other side. Ivan is already there, but again, this T90 seems to have a lot of trouble spotting my pixel trip and despite the fact that they repeatedly fail to hit it with the javelin. Whether this is to do with the short range, jammers on the T90 or something else, I have no idea. But after three misses, I finally lose patience and edge one of the Bradleys around the corner of the building to finally knock it out with 25mm cannon fire, allowing me to start creeping forward in the centre and get on with picking off the remaining isolated BMPs and T90s while they wait for infantry support that's not coming. While all this is going on inside the complex, outside and on the left flank, the Russians have called in some air support. There's at least one helicopter buzzing about trying to pick off my vehicles with anti-tank missiles. The Stinger teams are firing away without scoring any hits, but that SAM threat can only be helping throw the pilots off, and both the trees where I'm trying to hide my Abrams and the active protection systems on some of the Bradleys are intercepting a good number of missiles. Inevitably though, some of them are going to get through, and I lose one of the Abrams and one of the left-hand Bradleys. Luckily, those helicopter ATGMs dry up, and after that, the gun runs and unguided rocket attacks prove pretty much totally ineffective. Despite Ivan's helicopters, the left-hand Bradley platoon has been working to wear down Ivan's vehicles in the tree line. The compound wall here is high enough to keep the Brads and the infantry safely out of harm's way, and I'm playing pop-up with the javelin teams, running upstairs to see over the wall, spot and engage targets before dropping back down again. There are casualties on both sides, but at the end of the day, I'm entirely willing to sacrifice one or two men in the javelin team in exchange for a piece of Russian armour. 30 minutes after Bravo Company has arrived, it's looking like Ivan isn't going to be kind enough to come to me. On the plus side, that means that I've managed to stop him in the industrial complex, and I can start pushing forward with my light infantry platoons and the right-hand Bradley platoon to cause casualties and try and retake some of the objectives there. On the minus side, if the Russians aren't going to attack me across these huge open fields on the left, I'm going to have to attack them across the huge open fields on my left. And although I've whittled away at Ivan's armour in the first tree line, I haven't touched the second tree line and I haven't even seen any dismounted infantry. But I don't need to seize the entire tree line, I just need to control the highway E95 objective. So what I'm going to do is relocate my left hand Bradley platoon down to the woods between the highway and the complex and use them to support my remaining three Abrams in a grind up the highway itself to take and clear the objective. At the moment I'm focusing purely on the highway objective, not the overpass. I'm just going to take it steady, pick Ivan apart all the while, praying that his helicopters have gone away and he's not getting any more reinforcements. In the industrial complex, it looks like there are still Russian mechanized platoons at the south wall, including at least one T90, plus some depleted infantry in the center. Where to commit the Bradley platoon here is a good question. The left is probably riskier, but puts me in a position to potentially support my highway push by blasting through the wall. But the right is more secure and could well allow me to roll up Ivan from right to left. 
I'm leaning left because the highway is more important than the complex objectives, but we'll see how it goes. It's a developing situation and the Bradley platoon is extremely flexible. I can pretty much send it wherever I like here to capitalize on any weaknesses I find in Ivan's line. The decision to pull out of the left hand compound is almost in time to avoid being hit by Ivan's artillery, but not quite and there's chaos for a few minutes as the shells ray down, some heavy casualties to the infantry, and a bit of a worrying moment as one of the evacuating Bradley's bogs down in the crater, but ultimately, the Russians can throw their artillery at me over here instead of on my main effort as much as they like. The likely culprit, or at least the high value target, is an artillery observation vehicle on the far left, which I've spotted from one of the complex buildings. I've got a javelin team up there acting as another OP, and I take the risk of ordering them to fire. A second javelin attack on a nearby BMP-3 fails, and although the forward observer gets taken out, the tower javelin team gets lit up by Russian armour. By now, the mobile remnants of my left-hand Bradley platoon have rendezvoused with the company HQ elements and the Abrams on the highway, and the grind is kicking off. And there's not much resistance, the tree line is being thinned out pretty comprehensively by the javelins, and the Abrams are able to deal with Russian survivors. Ivan's infantry remains elusive though, despite small arms fire killing one of the Abrams tank commanders who had his head up for communication purposes given all the jamming, so I'm prepping the woods and the tree line with area fire while the infantry move up to clear the objective area. It quickly becomes apparent that the enemy isn't holding the highway in any significant strength, and after a quick exercise in mopping up, the objective is secured. Meanwhile in the complex, the Bradley platoon is continuing to creep forward, picking off BMP and crushing Russian infantry until Ivan is no longer an offensive threat. Some probing from both strong points reveals that there's still some Russian armour and infantry around the right hand gate buildings, while the way up to the warehouse objective on the left is pretty much clear. So the Bradleys split, two to contain the right flank because I don't want to push into close quarters with Ivan if I can avoid it, and the other two to back up and attack on the warehouse. Again, there's not much resistance, the little green men have suffered heavy casualties and don't seem to be in the mood to fight, and the remaining BMPs are camped out at the right hand gate, making the warehouse more of an occupation of the objective than a straight up assault. Outside the walls with the highway objective under control, it's time to move on to the overpass. This is significantly more dangerous territory given that it's been more difficult to soften up with javelins and there are some very open sight lines but it looks like the main threat, the T-90s, are mostly all knocked out and despite some laser warning scares, the Abrams-Bradley combination is able to destroy most of the surviving BMP-3s in between them and the overpass. It's a bad time to get cocky though and the last T-90 is well positioned to cover the final stretch of open ground between the complex and the overpass. It manages to get some hits in, damaging one of the Abrams and destroying another as I try and get a keyhole shot on it proving at least that not even an Abrams can take a quality 125mm AP shell to the face and brag about it afterwards. Despite that loss though, the lead Abrams has made it into the cover of the overpass objective and, with supporting fire from the other vehicles, is able to kill or drive off the Russian infantry defending the objective. With only a few minutes to go and no real desire to take the risks of further mopping up, it's time for the game to end. This time at least, given the amount of carnage inflicted on the Russians, it wasn't exactly a surprise to clinch a major victory. I've lost 37 men dead and 30 wounded, two men are missing, I've lost two Abrams, a T-64, three BMP-2s, two Bradleys and three Humvees, but in return I've killed 109 Russians, wounded 52, captured one and destroyed nine T-90s, 19 BMPs and shot down a drone. I'm controlling all the objectives except the plant offices and the plant lab. Ivan's push on Kiev has been blunted, and NATO has gained the time it needs to react, contain the threat, and mount a counter-offensive. That's it for Backs to the Wall, guys. An absolute monster of a mission, but nothing on the next one, which is going to be the last mission in the US campaign. Hope you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next video.